It's good to have Pastor Mark Hall in the assembly. I told him a little earlier, Mark, if you can come in, please, man. Don't let me find out the day you're here that you're here. Come in advance. The pulpit is available to him. He knows the word of God. He, he, he has been mastered by God, and God has given him some decent skills to bless the church, to teach the church, to edify the church. And I told him, let me know in advance. I could at least try and fit him into the calendar. It'll be good to have him not just teaching a certain segment of the church, but uh, an opportunity to present the word to the people of God. He's been here so often, it's almost like he's one of us. And Brother Mark, good to see you. Good to have you. Let's welcome him. Good to see Brother Brent Outen. Brent, just stand up. You know, Brent had a, was having some, some challenges there, and, and he's here, and uh, it's, it's such a joy to see him. Such a joy to see him. Welcome. Father, again, thank you for your word. Edify it to our hearing. Help us to find instruction, we pray. Amen. Whose kingdom are you seeking first is the sub-theme. Whose glory are you pursuing? And to help us with that theme, we're going to be looking at Matthew 6, 19 to 34. It's in your handout, not all of it, because, you know, I have this task of trying to make it fit uh, uh, back and front page. And so I had to eliminate some of it, but the, the poignant parts are there for you. Here's what God says. In fact, Jesus himself gives this word to the people. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Now, again, we're in the midst of a stewardship series. I hope today, by the grace of God, to cut you loose to be a better steward because you're not worried. You see, worry helps us or causes us to feel that we can't trust God. we got to do it on our own. Worry causes us to take matters into our own hands. But I hear Jesus saying, no. I need your full stewardship, but I need, to try, I need you to trust me for your life. And so by the grace of God, I pray that he would cut us loose from worry and release us to be fully devoted disciples who are committed and surrendered to his will, trusting him for everything in our lives. Do not store up for yourselves, says Jesus, treasures on earth. A very real temptation for all of us. Where moth and rust destroy. That's why you shouldn't, friends. And where thieves break in and steal part of a men's retreat and we were in these beautiful facilities that uh, God had blessed this Christian couple with and for all those beautiful facilities some thieves thought that they should break in there and take what this woman had offered up to God as a preschool to touch the youth of our nation and it just broke my heart but you know you can't store up anything on this earth because moth rust thieves break in and take what you earned what God has given you but they believe they should come and take it from you Friend, I should tell you, don't put stock in things that you could lose. Amen? Amen? Where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. In other words, be careful what your eye sees and desires. Be very careful. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. There it is again. No one can serve two masters. Anyone out there can serve two masters. Let me see you. Anyone out there could please two women. Let me see you. All right, you always listening last time. <laughs> Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, this is Jesus talking. This is not me. Cut yourself loose from the speaker. This is Jesus talking to you. Therefore, I tell you, who is Jesus? God in the flesh. When he speaks, you, you better believe you can listen and take stock. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more important than food? 
and your body more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Think about that. Birds don't go to the grocery store. They just, food is just available to them. God has made it so. Where do birds go during a hurricane? Do you see any dead birds after a hurricane? Anybody? Where do they go? God in his wisdom has found a way to take care of all of that. That's the God that you say you serve. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much, are you not much more valuable than they? Boy, I want to just segue into a sermon about these tree huggers who prefer to save tree and shark and dog and babies dying in the womb and children starving and they don't care. Human life is infinitely more valuable than anything else. Yet these tree huggers putting billions of dollars into saving the rainforest and need to be saved. But I would see some of them jokers put money into um, making sure that abortion doesn't happen, making sure that children who have, who, have, who have parents have died or whatever, that they have a place to live. There's orphanages and, and other places. See them put stock into life, real life, made in the image of God. Are you not worth much more than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Jesus just tackling this issue of worrying right, left, and center. You can't, you can't add to your life by worrying. In fact, you take it away from it, as I'm going to show you. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, there it is again. What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But instead of worrying, let me tell you what to do. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things, all these things I've been talking about, all these things will be given to you as well. Given to you as well. As God gives to the birds of the air, as God clothes the lilies of the field, God says, trust me. You seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and I will make sure they are given to you in due season. Now, friends, if you see me fudge on the word of God or lie about him saying something to me, say, you stop me. As I, have I misrepresented what he said yet? No? Okay. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has trouble of its own. I want you as an exercise, go and circle how many times he says, do not worry. And let that be your mantra. Stop the worrying. Let me tell you what worry does. Death was walking towards a city one morning, and a man asked, Death! What are you doing here? Where are you going? Death said, I'm going to take a hundred people. The man said, that's horrible. Death said, that's just what I do. That's just the way it is. The man hurried home to warn everyone he could about death's plan. Death is coming and he could take about a hundred people. As evening fell, the man saw a newspaper that said a thousand people had died that day in the city. Just as he arrived at his home, he met Death again. He said, Death, what happened, man? You tell me you was here to take a hundred people. What happened? A thousand people died today. Well, you lie to me, eh? Death said, no, 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 no. I kept my word. I took a hundred people. Worry took the others. Worry took the others. Are you worried about anything this morning? Odds are that someone is or someone's are. Worry seems to be an epidemic in the world in which we live. 
Some years ago, the Mayo Clinic stated that statistically 80 to 85% of their total caseload were ill either in reality or artificially due directly to worry and anxiety. Many experts say that coping with stress is the number one health priority of our day. Coping with stress, the number one health priority of our day. Worry taken, 900. Death only looking for 100. Worry taken the rest. Are you here as a warrior today? Listen to God today and get off that train. That train got buck up with you on it. Get off that train. As a child of God, worry is not your lot. It's not your mode of operation. It's not how you should think. It's not how you should live. Not when you believe in a sovereign God who loves you and makes all things work out according to his purpose. Worry ain't the street you live on. You shouldn't know how to spell worry, much less live it out. One leading physician has stated that in his opinion, 70% of all medical patients could cure themselves if only they got rid of their worries and fears. Part of Carl's challenge right now was some of the drugs he was on were giving him panic attacks and anxiety. And so obviously when I prayed over him, I prayed, Lord, now you got to undo that. You see, folks, I've ran out of air at 100 feet underwater while I was scuba diving. And every so often, and I had, to, I had to talk my way back up to the top of the water without air. Talk my way back up. Thank God for my training. Don't ever try a scuba dive if you've not been properly trained. You'll kill yourself. Best sport in the world, mind you. Nothing like it. But you know what? I had to talk my way over panic, over an inability to breathe, to get back up 100 feet. It took me five minutes. You say, Pastor Lyle, you cannot take five minutes not breathing. Folks, there's a, there's a science to it, trust me, but I got back up. You see me, right? <laughs> Couple, y'all, plenty of y'all had not hug you since that happened. That happened over about 18 years ago. And, you feel, and that's flesh that hug you, right? So I lie, I got back up. My gauge said I was 100 feet down. I could not see the top of the water. I was down there and I was deep and it took me about five minutes to get up. All right? But every so often, something happens where uh, I can't breathe and there I feel that panic onset coming on. I say the devil is a liar. It's a known fact that people who panic will cause themselves to get in trouble. Don't panic. One, one thing that's not in my mind or vocabulary is panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. This car is skidding out of control. Don't panic. Don't panic. That's my motto. Don't panic. Don't panic. What happens when you panic? Oh, Jesus! Oh, oh, oh. No, when you panic, you're out of control. Friends, the reason I don't drink is I don't like to be out of control. I, don't, I never like to be out of control. I don't want to be out of control. I don't want to be out of control. I don't want my mind playing games with me. And so you don't panic. Lord, the car is skidding. Need your help, Lord. Got it? Okay. You, you, you're feeling a panic attack coming on. I take authority over the situation. Good chance it could be a demonic spirit trying to bring that fear of last time on this time. Dismiss it. Bam, I'm okay again. Friends, be careful what you allow to cause you to be in fear. And there's nothing so terrifying as not being able to breathe. Amen? Watch your fears. Do not let your fears overcome you. Overcome your fears. Overcome your fears. 70% of all medical patients would cure themselves if they only got rid of their worries and fears. Medical science has closely tied worry to heart trouble, blood pressure problems, ulcers, thyroid malfunction, migraine headaches, and a host of stomach disorders. Worry, 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 and anxiety. An estimated 25 million Americans have high blood pressure due to stress and anxiety. Eight million have stomach ulcers. Every week, 112 million people take medication for stress-related symptoms. You wanna wonder why Jesus takes a whole chapter of sacred scripture, and that's just one gospel. It's also in some of the other ones. Why, why does he stress it? Why does he say don't worry so often? Why? Because he knows us. And friends, by God's grace, I want to cut you loose from worrying. Worry and faith don't go together. You're either worshiping at the altar of one or you're worshiping at the altar of another. Drop this worrying, friends. Jesus says, do not worry, 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 do not worry. Cut yourself free. Trust. Trust in him and him alone. 
What is worry? Writer E. Stanley Jones said, worry is the interest we pay on tomorrow's troubles. They ain't even reach yet, and we pay an interest on them. I can't tell you the amount of times I was worried about my schedule and just how I get all that done, how I, how I overbooked like this, whatever. And I say, Lyle, stop and pray. Ask the Lord to help, it, help us out. And it's amazing. Just uh, Pastor Bethel, that situation, um, I'm not able to meet tomorrow. What a, bam. Uh, you just see things just sort themselves out. And you begin to realize, boy, you know, I was worrying, paying interest on tomorrow's problems when all I had to do was take it to the Lord. It is when we become so preoccupied with future troubles that our present thoughts are troubled. Your future fooling with your present. And your future aim and reach. And you're even sure that future can happen, but you can, you convince it can happen, so you're worrying now. No man ever sank under the burden of the day. It is when tomorrow's burden is added to the burden of today that the weight is more than a man can bear. You got that? You appreciate that quote there? You see why I lifted out and put it in the box? Hold on to that. Huh? It's worth saying again. All right. It is when we become so preoccupied with future troubles that our present thoughts are occupied. We can't even enjoy the moment because we are occupied with tomorrow, which ain't come yet. Which, if you put it in God's hand, ain't going to come like that. No man ever sank under the burden of this day. It is when tomorrow's burdens are added to this day's burdens that the weight is more than a man can bear. Friends, cut yourself loose from the worry. Cut it loose. Put it in the hands of the Lord. Anyone hearing me today? Oh, for God's sake, I try to free up. I try to call you to live in faith, not in fear of the future. Faith in the God who holds the future. That's what I'm trying to do today. Cut yourself loose. Only one way to do it. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Cast yourselves completely on him. Watch him work it out. Watch him work it out. The Greek word used for worry is the word merinoma. I'm saying that wrong. It's been a while. It's been years I had Greek uh, marks, so you have to excuse me. Which literally means, quote, to be drawn in different directions. Worry pulls us apart, friends. It is trying to live in a place where you are not. So what's the cure for worry? What's the cure for worry? Let's look at it. The cure comes when we realize that worry is one, needless. Needless. Worry is needless. Say it with me. Worry is needless. There are more important things in life than food and clothing, friends. Worry is needless since there are much more important things that which we, um, much more important issues than what we so often become preoccupied with. We worry about a test, but when being in a car accident, <laughs> the, the, the task you're worrying about isn't even a reality. You have to deal with this present reality. This does not mean that food and clothing are not important. They have to be seen as part of the bigger picture. Will a car break down, lose your salvation? Will your change dinner plans for next week alter God's plan for the nations? Most things we worry about will never happen anyway. Friends, listen to this. I recently read that a dense fog that covers a seven-city block area 100 feet deep is composed of less than one glass of water. You all hear me? A seven city block. A city block, a city of seven blocks. You know how big that is? It's huge. With fog a hundred feet deep is composed of less than one glass of water. A whole seven areas could be blanketed in fog, and all it is is less than one glass of water. I can send it around. I can put your worry in perspective right now. Send it around. If you've got to send it around, all change, do so. <laughs> it is able to cover all that area because it is hot, divided into 60,000 million drops. So little water creates so much gloom. 
So much little water creates so much gloom. It can cripple an entire city. <coughs> Friends, worry and anxiety are like that. Just a small amount can settle on you like a great cloud of doom and keep you from enjoying your life. Show them that glass, please. Pastor, what would you put that glass down for? What, what part of said it wrong? The church, you all didn't understand. Eddie, take that to the church, please. Let them see that. Take it to church. I just didn't want to get in trouble with Greg Williams when he read up the jail. Oh, okay. <laughs> just a small amount can settle on you like a great cloud of gloom and keep you from enjoying your life. But if all the things most people worry about were reduced to their true size, you could probably stick them in a little glass like that. Y'all ain't hear me today. I said if all the things most people worry about were reduced to their true size, you could probably stick them all into a water glass as well. Pass that cup around. I need you all to see what I'm talking about today. Worry is needless, but friends, guess what? Worry is senseless. Not only is it needless, it's senseless for you to be worried. Nature and the nature of God shows us that worrying is unnecessary. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows. It empties today of its straits. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows. It empties today of its straits. You're crippled right up worrying about tomorrow that will not come if you put it in God's hands. But you can't do nothing today because worrying likes to kill you. We need to believe our senses and, and learn to trust the unchanging nature of God. We do not need to pray for sunrises or seasons to come, friends. God is faithful. We see God's provision all around us. You don't need to pray that tomorrow could come. Tomorrow coming. We know that he is our father and fathers provide for their children. Oh, since I had children, my prayer life changed. Oh, you could tell Jesus my prayer life changed. I said to God, now come on. Now come on. Now, we don't wait for things with these children. We anticipate he said, Lord, now come on now, you saw this problem coming now. Come, 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 come. Let's talk. You see, your paradigm changes because you understand that fathers and mothers care for their children, love their children, want to do things for their children, not for their children's sake, but because they love their children, period, full stop. He's our father. Our experience of him in nature shows us that he can be trusted, so worry is senseless. Remember that God cares for you. Remember all he has brought to you and believe that he will do, continue to do it for you. I like what a former professor of mine said. He says, God's investment in us is so great, he could not possibly abandon us. He's Listen, he's already invested Christ in your salvation. You, you are infinitely important him. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Paul, that was one of those verses we learned in Navigators, right? Yeah. Psalm 145, 13. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Woo! Help me, Jesus. Not only is worry needless, not only is worry senseless, Worry is useless. Yeah. Useless. A useless exercise. It accomplishes no purpose. It's not worthwhile to wear a day all out before it comes. It's not, it's no use putting up your umbrella till it rains. How stupid. 
You walking around nice, balmy day with your umbrella open. Got to keep your hand in this tiring position. And it ain't even raining. My, 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 my. Someone has said that worry is kind of like a rocking chair. It is something you can do, but it never gets you anywhere. Something you can do, but it ain't getting you nowhere. Nowhere. There's a sensation of movement, but you ain't moving anywhere. It accomplishes nothing. In fact, it only acts to make things worse in your life. Two ways of responding to traffic jams, friends. You can accept them and drive on or curse and act crazy and try to force your way through. Now, I know sometimes that's a temptation. But you know what I didn't say? Lord, I didn't see the devil got my number on this one. You know what? Put on some music. Put on your music. Turn your car into a family altar if you got your kids with you. Don't let the stress and the anxiety and all that. Don't put, listen, put something on. Have a glorious time together. As a family. I'm teaching them to listen to the news and how to, how to uh, hear and understand what's going on in the world. All right? Because worry does not accomplish anything but making you sick. Think of how God feels when we carry around useless burdens which do nothing but weigh us down. Thing, things that he can help us with if we would but turn them over to him. Not only, friends, is worry needless, not only is it senseless, not only is it useless, but if you're a believer, friend, it's faithless. It's faithless. It shows lack of faith in your father. Worry is not just silly. It's also sinful. Do I have that there? Yes. Underline that. Sinful. Worry shows you that you're not trusting God as your provider. If you say that you trust someone, but then by your actions show that you do not, then you're not trusting. It represents what unbelievers do and shows you you do not trust God. Someone once said, if we worry, we can't trust. If we trust, we can't worry. A sign in front of church carried this admonition. When your knees knock together, kneel on them. When your knees knock together from fear and worry, kneel on them. In other words, pray. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Good advice. Trust in God and you will calm your fears and renew your courage. If only we would stop lamenting and look up, brothers and sisters. God is there. Christ is risen. The Spirit has been poured out from on high. All we know, all this we know, as a theological truth. But it remains for us to turn it into a joyous spiritual experience. Let me give you an illustration I've come to love so much. You've heard it before, but it's so appropriate at this time. Years ago in the pioneering days of aviation. A pilot was making a flight around the world. After he'd been gone for some two hours from his last landing field, he heard a noise in his plane, which he recognized as the gnawing of a rat. He realized that while his plane had been on the ground, a rat had gotten in. For all he knew, the rat could be gnawing through a vital cable or control of the plane. Now, friends, this man got reason to worry. You in a plane... Now, if you're on the runway, that ain't a problem. But friends, if you were 35, 45, 55, 60,000 feet up in the air, and that rat could gnaw through a vital cable that will bring that plane down, you got a, need, you got a reason to worry. Correct? If, well, fuel line, I don't know if he can enjoy that, that gas in his mouth, but anyway. So he, he can do something. He can really bring that plane down. It was a very serious situation. He was both concerned and anxious. At first, he did not know what to do. It was two hours back to the landing field from which he had taken off, and more than two hours to the next field ahead. Then he remembered that the rat is a rodent. Well, I, okay. <laughs> but here's the point. It is not made for heights. It is made to live on the ground and under the ground. Therefore, the pilot began to climb began to climb. He went up a thousand feet, then another thousand, and another, until he was more than 20,000 feet up. The gnawing ceased. The rat was dead. He could not survive in the atmosphere of those heights. 
More than two hours later, the pilot brought the plane safely to the next landing field and found the dead rat. Brothers and sisters in Christ, worry is a rodent. It cannot live in the secret place of the Most High, though. It cannot breathe in the atmosphere made vital by prayer and familiarity with the Scriptures. Worry dies when we ascend to the Lord through prayer and His Word. I wish I had me a church today, because someone would have said amen by now. Friends, listen, if, you, if, you, if worry got a grip on your soul, listen to me. Take it to the Lord in prayer. God's prescription for worry is simple. Take this little verse, memorize it, and claim it as your own. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, yes, everything, let your request be made known to God. Well, let me, let me do it the way you have it there. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard, will guard your heart from worry, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul, you see that cup, right? All the worries, the trying to, yeah, put your worries in the cup, folks. Put your worries away. Friends, I remember when the Lord beat this into Lyle Scott Bethel. That Ben Dye, Why are you a thief to people in illustration, uh, Brother Pete? <laughs> I remember when the Lord beat this into my consciousness. Can't elaborate on it too much, but uh, I was a worry wart when I was uh, younger and in college and and um, uh, the, there was a situation where I, I could fly for free uh, because my dad worked for the airlines and I could fly for free, but there were blackout times I couldn't fly. And for some reason, I, I could not find that ticket. I had to leave the next day or that was it. And I was worried to death. And I had only just learned this in my navigator packet. I'd, I'd learned this. And as I was worrying, and the Lord kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, Lyle, what are you supposed to do about worry? And I said, well, 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 you ain't supposed to worry, but, but, but no, I got to worry about this. This is serious. I mean, if I don't get out of here, there's no place to stay. They shut down the, 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 the campus and no place to stay. I could be out on the street. Blah, blah, blah. Lord says, tell me what the verse says. Man, Lord, I ain't got time for that. But anyway, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So what should you do? Long story short, I'm supposed to bring my concerns to him. I said, but Lord, you already know these. Anyway, let's, let's do what the scripture says. So I, I gave him, I told him what was going on, and I, he says, well, anything else there? With thanksgiving. The Lord, you're like, ah, oh, thank you, but this situation got me, got me Twitter painted. With thanksgiving. And so I did all that. And the Lord said, Lyle, go to bed. I got this. Go to what? <laughs> go, what? Lord, but Lord, I got to worry about this. Lord, you don't seem to understand. Go to bed. In faith, I went to bed. I had to be out of there by 11 to get to the airport. Lord, I woke up the next morning. Lord says, Lyle, go and check your cupboard, your, 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 your desk drawer. I said, Lord, that don't make no sense. My hand was all up in there last night because I thought that's where the ticket could have been. It wasn't there. Lord says, go and check. I said, Lord, I didn't been there. Lord says, go and check. Jumped down the bed, put my hand in the back, way in the back. What's that? Ticket. I said, Lord, you Skylark, though. <laughs> Lord, 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 you Skylark hard. This ticket was not here last night. One of your angels moved this because you're trying to teach me a lesson. This ticket was not here last night. You believe the same thing happened the next year? No time to get into that. But uh, again, I um, remembered the scripture, went to bed at 9 o'clock, stopped worrying. Woke up the next day, Lord ain't brought me. I said, oh, Lord, what's going on here? I said, so pray it again. I knew I had to get out of there this time by 2 o'clock, which means I had to leave by um, uh, 12 to get to the airport. Check the mailbox several times, nothing. I called Dad. Dad said, I sent that ticket two weeks. I don't know why it's not there. Check the ma mail came in, nothing. So maybe it's coming to UPS. UPS came, checked the UPS, nothing. I said, oh, Lord, that's the only way the mail could come in. Oh, Lord, you start worrying again. Lord, say, Lyle. Be anxious for nothing. So I, I stopped being worried. I said, listen, 
I called a friend and said, listen, I need to be at the airport. For tw uh, we need to leave for 12. So with no ticket in hand, 12 o'clock comes. I run to the car. I said, you ready to go? He says, did you get your ticket? I said, no, but somehow the Lord can get us in my hand. Let's go. I jump in the car about to slam the door. Lyle! Turn around. It's the mail lady. She says, I said, why is she calling me? She said, Ain't no ticket here. I know that. We had a discussion. She said, Lyle, the UPS man was two miles away, saw an envelope falling between the seat. He said, you know what? Maybe someone need this. Let me turn around. Here it is. She put it in my hand. I said, let's go. Drove to the airport. 30 minutes in the airport. I said, let me see if this is my ticket. <laughs> Open it. Ticket. I say, Lord, oh, you could skylock. Oh, you could skylock. I have a very interesting relationship with the Lord. But friends, here's the point. 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 God says, be anxious for nothing. God tackled my worrying spirit head on. And though there have been backsliding occasionally into worry, I'm reminded God wants us not to worry. Put all your worries, cares, and concerns away from you. It's needless, it's senseless, it's useless. Don't do it. Get away from it and live. Uh, friends, we need to be focused. We need to focus, focus, focus. Um, it is said that um, when people are skiing and they're, and they're skiing between trees, many people make the mistake of looking at the tree that they're trying to miss. But every professional skier knows, don't look at the tree. Look at the space between the tree, because what your eyes focus on is what you're going to hit. <laughs> and many people have died because they didn't know what to focus on. Friends, I want to give you some focus, some things to focus on, so that you don't hit the trees from worry and fear. Okay. So we need to focus on what is important. Focus on what is important. What do I have there for your blank? You. Okay. Um, uh, la, 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 let's see. Um, if we focus, da, 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 da. all right, yes, thank you. Focus on what is unseen rather than what is seen. Remember the illustration of Elijah, Elisha and his servant. Uh, Elisha, long story short, Elisha has, uh, the, a king is hunting for him, the king of Aram, and he sends all of his soldiers. They surround the city. And the next morning when the city wakes up, the city is surrounded by the armies of the, uh, the Armenians. Elisha comes in, there's not a bit of, bit of worry on his face. He ain't even sweating, though he knows these people have come here to get him. His, his servant is in mortal terror. He said, what you scared about? He said, boss, you ain't seen this, eh? This is a Bahamian version. He says, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he may see what the real situation is. And the man's eyes were open, and though he saw the armies of the Arminians, he saw all around them a host of the heavenly kind. And Elisha's prayer wasn't finished. He said, now, Lord, strike the eyes of these soldiers that they might be blinded. And the army that came to take him captive, he took captive. Friends, you need to have your eyes on the unseen rather than what is seen. What's the unseen? A God who's in control. A God who can sort any situation you're in out if you trust him. Keep your eyes on the um, unseen rather than what is seen. The devil can use a little cup of water to obscure your vision and cause you to not have faith. See. Focus on the fact that God is in control, not on your inability to control. Focus on the fact that God is in control, not on your inability to control. We know from the scriptures that God makes all things work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Friends, a magician knows how to use a sleight of hand trick to get you to focus on the wrong thing while he performs uh, what looks like magic on the other hand. The devil does this sleight of hand thing where he has us to look on the problem, whereas we fail to recognize we should look to God who is a solution. Just because your life seems out of control, friends, does not mean that God is not in control. Learn to commit yourself to him. How do we seek his kingdom first? Well, we begin by asking the Lord for his kingdom to come in greater quantity and quality in our own hearts. We're asking God, God, make yourself real to me. Uh, show up in my life, show up in my heart. Uh, come to me in greater quantity and quality that I may truly know and experience your lordship over my life. Allow the Lord to rule, reign, and regulate your thinking 
So the Spirit of God is in control of all aspects of your life, relationship, and ministry. We need to pray that the Lord of the harvest would have dominion, control, and rule over all aspects of our own heart and mind. Only when the Lord is given complete control of our heart, mind, and wills will worry begin to fade. But as long as we are still in control of our lives, we will fear and we will worry. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, we're told in Colossians 3.16. Two, resist, reject, and renounce all rival kingdoms to the kingdom of God. There are many kingdoms that will attempt to compete with the kingdom of God that include egotistical thinking, monetary value, fleshly, worldly, and devilish influences. They're not to have dominion over your life. We must take seriously what James says about resisting, renouncing, and rejecting any other kingdom, kingdoms of attempt to resist the ruling of Christ in our hearts and lives. Three, we need to help people think and act ethically as Jesus would have us in all situations. We cannot think ethically unless we are ready to repent of our sins, of commission, omission, wrong dispositions, and faulty assumptions. Four, we need to seek first his kingdom, which means advancing the lordship of Christ over every area of life. How do you seek first his kingdom? Advance his agenda in your life. What's his agenda for your life? Not your agenda. You've got to die to your agenda if his kingdom is going to be advanced. And six. Sorry, fifth. Seeking first his kingdom involves a humbling to submit to his plans instead of your own. Brothers and sisters, Jeremiah 29, uh, 11 helps us to know that God has our lives. He has a plan for our lives. God has a plan for every individual, but only when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God will he lift us up to see it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We can begin this change by asking the Lord for his kingdom to come in our hearts in greater measure. Allow him to rule and reign in our thinking. Allow his spirit to have the dominion. The seeking first of his kingdom and righteousness assures us that all these things will eventually be added to us from the hand of the king who owns, controls, and dispenses all good gifts to those who ask for his deliverance. Shall we pray? God has spoken to you today. You know that you have been wasting time needlessly, uselessly, senselessly, faithlessly, and worry. And today God says, change, repent of that. Instead, have an attitude where you will no longer be anxious about those things, but by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. You have a new posture. You will make your request known to God. You're going to thank him because you know he's in control. Brothers and sisters, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'd like for you in this stewardship series to turn this corner, to say to worry, you two are parting company now. He's a useless, senseless, faithless friend. Only can get you in trouble, give you anxieties and frustrations and pains and fears. You're parting company with worry. And you're taking up Jesus as your new and dearest friend. And so I want to pray for you. If you realize that God has spoken to you today and you need to tangibly, visibly step out and say, yes, God, I am responding to this word I've heard. I want to give you an opportunity to stand. An opportunity to stand and say, Lord, it's me you've been talking about. I've been the one crushed and consumed by worry. I've been the one uh, held in bondage and uh, unable to move and function. Lord, I want, to, I want to seek first your kingdom in all things and your righteousness. And I want to be found with my heart guarded from the worries and fears and concerns of life because I'm trusting you. And I can be a better steward because worry is not hindering me in that regard. The musicians are going to sing uh, and move in one verse and I will return for our prayer time. Thank you. time is gone and so we want to pray for you offer your hearts up to the Lord hold out your hands say Lord here I am 
I'm tired of being a slave of worry. I'm tired of being held down and worry's foot on my neck. I want to be freed up to serve you. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus, you've told us, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Lord, I want to confess my sin. I have been worried. I've worried about everything. I've allowed worry to cripple my life. I've allowed worry to sap my joy of the future. I've allowed worry to take away opportunities for ministry and serving you. Lord, I repent now. I repent. I repent. I ask your forgiveness. Cleanse me. Heal me. Take away this numbing fear of worry. And Lord, I've told what I can do. Rather than worry, I can pray. When my knees knock, I can kneel on them and take it to you. You tell us, don't be anxious about anything. Anything. Yes, anything. Nothing, nothing is free for us to be worried about. Everything is to be surrendered. And so, Lord, now I take this worrying spirit of mine and I cast it before you. I ask now, Lord, that you would cleanse me. Having repented, I ask, Lord, for cleansing. And with the cleansing, Lord, I ask for ability. I ask for the courage, for the patience to wait on you. Lord, waiting on you is an art. We can wait on you because we trust you. Help us to be minded of the scripture that says, God who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will he not also with him freely give us all things? Lord, we submit our souls to you. You are our father, our loving father. You love us. We, we vow today to trust you with our lives, with our, with our affairs, with our monies, with our bills, with everything. The, the future that has clouded and made us so afraid. We choose, Lord, not to be afraid, but to be faithful to trust you. Help us to learn in the testing that will come that we can wait on you. For it may not be in our time, but it will be in the right time. So own our faith. Change our hearts. Cause us to be faithful rather than fretful. Cause us to worship rather than worry. We surrender ourselves to you. Help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And may we with our own eyes see a new day when we see all these things added to us, not because we've worried, but because we've trusted. Bless us now then, we ask. May the Lord keep and sustain you in all things. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our service is over, but your service to the Lord continues. Go from this place serving the Lord, no longer worrying, but worshiping and trusting in the one who is able. Amen. Amen.